I mean, he's ready to worship the Lord this morning. Praise God. Amen. All of our early folks is here. The rest will file in. <laughs> uh, let's pray. Father, we thank you. Thank you, God, for your presence. Thank you, Lord God, that you are God over all. And we come to worship you today. We come to lift up praise and adoration. Lord, we just open our hearts to praise you, to worship. And Lord, we receive today your presence. We receive, Lord God. We, we ask, Lord God, that there will be communion, fellowship with you in this place today. Thank you, Father. Holy Spirit, this is your time. This is your people. We are your vessels. Angels, you are welcome all from north, south, east, and west over this hill today. In Jesus' name, we give you praise for it, Lord. Amen.
rehearsing what I heard. I love you. Right in the middle of all your noise, I love you. It did something for me. Jesus, we soak in your love. We need your love. We need it, Jesus. This is my chance to tell you I love you back. I love you back. I'm so grateful, Lord.
Jesus shine through all the praises that we sing, we sing. Come and let your presence fill our praise, fill our praise. Come and let your presence fill this place. How we love you, Lord. Come and let your presence fill our praise, fill our praise. Come and let your presence fill this place for you.
Here we are, here we are. It's all for you. Here we are, here we are. It's all for you. Here we are, here we are.
I think I'd just like to sit up here and just watch y'all because, you know, God is, God is up to something. You know, the, uh, Sister Joey, if you want to go ahead and come on up, you can. Sister Joey's going to lead us through communion this morning. I'll try not to take up too much of her time, but Hebrews 11, 6 says this, that, that without faith, it's impossible to please God. And one of those worship songs, you know, we were, we were singing about pleasing Him. At his, we're, we're here for His good pleasure. And if we're here to please Him, listen to me. It's not complicated. We overcomplicate this stuff. Hebrews 11, 6 says, Without faith, it's impossible to please God. And I'm here to tell you that your faith is, simple, is as simple as choosing to believe. That's how simple your faith is. Just choosing to believe. And, that, and the next part of that says, For they that come to God must believe that He is, and that He's a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. And sometimes we come with barriers and walls which stand between us, but you know what? Your reward might be today just might be freedom today. 
Some of you get saved right now during communion. Can you imagine that? Could you imagine being set free during communion? Could you imagine getting a glimpse of who he is during communion? It's as simple as choosing to believe in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Good morning. I've really been looking forward to this. And, uh, well, first of all, thank you, Val. But why is it that when we come to communion, we get all solemn? I mean, I understand we're honoring the Lord. It's communion. It's the Lord's Supper. But it's like suddenly we all have to kind of get semi-depressed. And I'm going to encourage you this morning, that's not the way to receive the Lord's Supper, okay? So there's different ways that, um, that this can be called. It can be called communion, uh, the Lord's Supper, the Last Supper, uh, the table of the Lord. I really like that phrase. We're going to talk about that this morning. Uh, some traditions call it the Eucharist. You all know what I'm referring to, right? The body and the blood. <clears throat> so let's call it the table of the Lord this morning. Tables appear throughout the Word of God, and they're not tables like, you know, the round oak table that's sitting in your kitchen. It means something different. They didn't have tables like we did. And so the Last Supper, the picture you see of Jesus and the disciples all lined up on the pew, that's not the way it was. They were reclining. I'm not sure how you lay down and eat, but I could do popcorn, but I don't think I could do dinner. But the table of the Lord... And so a couple of places that we see table that I think are so important, it's very, um, throughout the Old Testament, there would be food involved with covenant. We all like food. I mean, every time we get together, we eat, right? Funerals, weddings, it's Friday, any day that ends in day, we eat. In the 23rd Psalms, the Lord says he prepares a table for us. But I want to talk about another table that appears in Scripture this morning. Just, I'll be quick, Pastor, but this is so good. So in 2 Samuel 9, we have the story of David and Mephibosheth. And many of you are familiar. Mephibosheth was the son of Jonathan, who was David's best friend. Um, we had King Saul, his son Jonathan. Then David became king. Jonathan and Saul were killed the same day. Um, and in 2 Samuel 9, David says, Is there any, anybody left from Saul's family that I can show kindness? Is there anybody left? And they said, Well, there's a grandson, Jonathan's son, Mephibosheth. So they went and got Mephibosheth. They said, But he's lame in his feet. He had been dropped as, a, as an infant, and he was crippled. And they brought him to David. And David said, where is he? And Ziba answered, he's at the house of Maker, son of Sessa, in Lodabar. So David had him brought from Lodabar, from the house of Maker. And when Mephibosheth, son of Jonathan, son of Saul, came to David, he bowed down to pay him honor. And David said, Mephibosheth, and he replied, your servant. And this is what David said at the table. Don't be afraid, for I will surely show you kindness for the sake of your father, Jonathan. I will restore to you all the land that belonged to your grandfather, Saul, and you will always be at my table. He didn't mean you'll always be at my kitchen table. If you do a word study of table, it means provision. It means a spread. Like we have here when we have potlucks, we have a spread. That's what the table of the Lord looks like. It's a spread. And so what was David offering at his spread? He was offering restoration. He was offering provision. Now, I'm going to take a little bit of license here. When you sit at a table, when we sit at a table, we can't see each other's feet. And I think if you were reclining, you wouldn't notice each other's feet. When Mephibosheth was seated at the table of the king, no one knew he was lame. He was at the table of the Lord, and everything that he needed 
was provided for him. So today, I'm going to say, and I, I, George will laugh at this because I have a tendency to make up lyrics to songs, and so I had to Google this. There's a song, There's Room at the Cross for You, but I always thought it was, There's Room at the Cross for Me. But there is. There's room at the cross for you. There's room at the cross for me. But you know what? There's room at the table. There's room at the table. So today, if you feel like a Mephibosheth, if you feel lame, broken, if you were dropped by someone who should have taken care of you, if you have an orphan spirit, he was the last one left. And everything had been taken from him. But David restored it. When you come to the table of the Lord today, whatever you're lacking can be restored to you and nobody sees your broken feet. Nobody sees your lameness. So I'm gonna invite you right now, we're gonna take the elements. The Lord prepares a table for us in the presence of our enemies. That table's not in heaven. That table's in the presence of our enemies here this morning. So I'm going to pray and then I'm going to invite you to take the elements and whatever it is that you are lacking, and I've lost part of mine, that's all right. Whatever you're lacking, whatever you need, just close your eyes. Father God, I confess that today I need to sit at your table. I need my lameness covered by your provision, your feast, your spread. Father, if it's healing, physical healing, spiritual healing, if it's my orphan spirit, everybody's left me, everybody's gone, I'm the only one. But you make a place at the table for me. So Father, we honor the table of the Lord this morning. We take the bread, which represents your body broken for us, healing provided at the table. In the name of Jesus, receive the body of Christ. Now, Lord, we take the blood, the wine, the symbol of healing for our sins. You washed away our sins. We can be sinless at the table of the Lord, and we receive it with gladness in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, there's room at the table for each one of us, and we take our place today in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Woo. Thank you, Lord. Uh, if you pull out your prayer list for our friends that have reached out to us to agree with them in prayer and uh, to believe for the miraculous, there's some praise reports in there that you can read. We're still believing for supernatural intervention. Uh, maybe some of these need to find their way to the Lord's table. Some of these need to be released so they can come to the Lord's table. But either way, God has good intentions towards them, right? Do you believe that? If he has good intentions towards them, he just might have good intentions towards you. Because God's a good God, and he's in a good mood. Is he ever in a bad mood? Is he moody? I don't think so. I don't think so. I think he has perfect command of his emotions. Amen. So let's pray for our friends. Father, we, right now we just declare, God, the provision of the kingdom, light to invade darkness, power to invade the strongholds of the enemy, the strongholds of this world, of this life, of this frail body right now in Jesus' name. That the provision of the gospel, Lord God, that goes forward into their lives would produce more than just what we can imagine, because you said it was way beyond that. And Lord, that things that need to be released will be released. Things that need to be broken will be broken. Things that need to be healed will be healed. 
to the glory of the name of Jesus Christ, who is our Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, God, for what you're doing in their lives. Thank you for the testimonies, the hope, and the provision in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. In your bulletins, there's uh, one thing I kind of want to point out, and we're starting to put in the kids' church, for you, especially for you parents that have children in kids' church, what the lesson plan is uh, for this week. And if you go over to the, uh, or today, but then you go over to, to this week, you'll see the lesson plan for next, next Sunday. So the idea there is that if you would like, you could take and read through some of those scriptures with your child this week at home. You can allow the Holy Spirit to expand that while you're sitting with your kid and going over scriptures with them and the Holy Spirit just begins to trigger that imagination in, in your mind as to what all he means by some of this. And, and, uh, and that when they come to kids church next week, they're like, hey, I've got something to say. I've got something to contribute. Just something the way we can tie it back into the home and it's there for your availability as well. So, um, so there's some other upcoming events. You guys can look at that. And uh, amen. Ready for the word? Open your heart to receive the word, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Amen. Ah, thank you, Lord. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. All that's within me, bless his holy name. Praise God. We declare today that God is good. Amen. Praise God. This worship service today was just was just almost like, as Sister Tammy shared, it's almost like Holy Spirit just going around to each individual, you know, saying, I got you, you know, I love you. And uh, just, just wiping the stains off of us from the week. Praise God. What an amazing God we serve. You can't say, you, we're at loss for words. How many... How many understand here today that there's a structure to everything? It doesn't, there's, it's just not chaos out here. There's, there's a structure. Anything that is going to work well is going to have structure to it. And the body of Christ is no different. The, the spiritual realm is no different. Matter of fact, the spiritual realm is much more organized and has much more structure than than we do and uh we 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 battle this stuff all the time you know I, I work with a lot of different groups a lot of different types of ministries a lot of different understandings and and i i work with some that that are extremely uh structured and controlling about the things of god and I work with others that don't want any structure at all. They just want everything to be crazy chaos. And uh, so, you know, there's, there's these two extremes. And somehow we got to find in the middle because the, the, the kingdom of God is not without structure. And we're going to see that. One of the reasons that we have to understand that is because the kingdom of darkness has a very uh, well-organized structure. And, and implements that, and, and we fall prey to that all the time because we don't understand. We, we, we don't see it. And because we don't see it, many religions and many churches fall prey to the structure of the enemy thinking they're doing God's work. Boy, that's quiet. Amen. <laughs> there are there are characteristics that that define us, and those characteristics, you know, with, with uh, the kingdom of darkness, it's rulership. You rule over. In the kingdom of light, it's partnership and fellowship. Totally different. The rulership is much easier much easier to keep order. The fellowship and partnership is contingent on willing unity and willing obedience. And you don't, you don't always find that. 
Amen. Y'all, y'all acting like, oh boy, what's coming? What's coming? You're tensing up on me. What's he going to do now? I want you to turn with me to the book of Ephesians uh, chapter 6. We, we went over some of this last week. And, and last week, I just wanted to, I wanted to establish the, dominant, the dominance of God last week. So we really didn't get into a lot of this so, because I wanted just to get our faith established in the fact that Jesus is Lord over all. His name is above every name. Praise God. Over all principalities and powers and rulers of darkness and every name that is named and his name is above all. He is the head of all things and we are the body. And, and I want us to, to have a little more understanding today to know what we're, what we're up against. Things aren't happening the way they're happening just because they're happening that way. Did I? I think I made that clear. I'm not sure. <laughs> There's a reason things happen. There's a reason that we struggle with the things that we struggle. This is not some kind of this is not you know some kind of thing where where man is in control. We 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 choose a leader. We choose a dominance. And uh, there's two dominant forces that are battling over our soul. Think about how valuable you are when the two greatest forces in, in all eternity are fighting for you. That makes you pretty valuable. Amen. Demon spirits fight over you because they need, they need a nice, warm place to live. The Bible says when a demon is cast out, they walk through dry places. You know what dry places are? No body. They have no home. You're not a dry place. You're mostly water. <laughs> they call them disembodied spirits. And uh, demonic spirits do not like to be disembodied. They like to have a place to live, dwell, and carry out their objectives through people. And we're going we're gonna to talk about that today. In Ephesians chapter 6, start with verse 10, it says, and he himself, I'm in the wrong one, verse 10, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Praise God. Everybody say, I'm strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles or the desires, the manipulation of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to, to withstand in the evil day and having, all, having done all to stand. And the next verse says, stand therefore. Amen. How many want to be able to stand? I don't want to, I don't want to be manipulated by, by the, the devil and by his schemes and his wiles and yet he is the master manipulator. I've often said that the scariest thing about the devil is, is not his supposed horns or his red tail. That is some kind of Hollywood invention. Amen. It's not the exorcist. Hollywood, tried to make, Hollywood tries to make the devil so powerful. And without Jesus, he is. But all of that cinematic manipulation tries to make the devil look like he's in charge and he's in control and he can do all kinds of things. And I've seen it. I've, been, I've, I've confronted it. I've seen, I've seen people do things that you, you, would, uh, you can't believe that a human being could do. I've seen that kind of stuff. I've also watched those demons scream and cry as they're coming out of that body and, and, they're, and being, being thrown into dry places. Amen. Praise God. 
I had one guy down on the ground in India. <laughs> I should have used authority, but he hit me. I know you guys would have been more spiritual. <laughs> Normally, I'll just command them to stop. But this guy hit me in the head as hard as he could hit me. My back of my head touched my back. I mean, I thought he broke my neck. And when my, neck, when my head snapped back up, I said, son, that better have been a devil. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> and about that time, he took off spinning like a top with his arms straight out like this, just taking people's heads off and spinning like a top, and for whatever reason, instead of commanding him to stop, and I've done that, I've, I've commanded demons to stop and sit down, and I've watched people just drop to the ground. And instead of doing that, I said, God, give me strength, because I'm taking this guy out. <laughs> Little flesh. I'll admit it. And I took off running after him. Some of y'all have heard this. I took off running after him. And this other pastor that, that uh, was with us, John Avaska, grabbed hold of this guy when he hit me, and he went for a ride. I mean, when that guy started spinning, he had hold of him. And, he, and as he went by me, I, all I could hear is, is Pastor John hollering, Oh, God! Oh, God! Oh, God! <laughs> <laughs> that was hilarious. I, I enjoyed that. That was, that was the most fun you can have, I mean, right there. And I took off running after this guy, and there was like 10 or 12 Indian pastors that had tackled him, and he was trying to take him down, and he was just throwing them like rag dolls. I mean, they, they couldn't do anything with him. And I took her off running after him, and I still to this day don't know how I did this, but I, you know, God gave me strength, I mean... I took off running after him, and, and when I got behind him, I grabbed him by the waist and threw him in the air just like that. He was taller than me. He was about this tall. I threw him in the air, and as I saw his legs going by me, I just hit his legs like that, flipped him upside down, grabbed him, and drove his head in the ground. WWE right there. I mean... And when he went down, I pinned, him, I pinned him to the ground. And somehow when I pinned him, I had, I had one arm pinned on this side, had, had him pinned on the other side, and somehow his legs were sticking up in the air. I really don't know how that was. And they were twirling like, like this. I mean, his legs were just going everywhere. And he was screaming, these blood-curdling screams. I mean, screaming. His eyes were about this big, you know. He's bugged out. Looked like, looked like uh, Democrats. I mean, <laughs> you, ever, you, ever see, you seen some of them on TV? You know, pictures, their eyes look like they're this big. I can't get my eyes to be that big. I don't know. I don't know how they do it. I actually read a psychological uh, writing the other day that said when people when you can see the whites of people's eyes all the way around they are they either know that they're guilty they just did something they're guilty of or they're psychotic that's the only reason that you see the whites of people's eyes all the way around come on somebody some of y'all are gonna be going around like this be squinting the rest of the day but he was screaming these blood curdling screams and I got tickled. I'm holding this guy down and I'm, I'm laughing. I'm, I'm just, I just start cracking up. It really caught me off. It, it was funny to me. And I finally, said, I finally said, is that all you can do, devil? <laughs> Scream like a terrified little kid? I mean, <laughs> well, that is all he could do. Because a greater than him had showed up, and it was, it's the name of Jesus and the Holy Spirit. You understand? Amen. I just wanted to preface everything with that. But he, uh, 
he told us, he said, to be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. And then he began to give us instruction here. He, he, said, he said, because you're not fighting flesh and blood, I have to remind myself of that. How many have to remind yourself of that? Amen. When a face is representing the devil, it's really hard to ignore it. But against principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. Now, I want to I go through this. I didn't go through this last week. I want to go through this a little more in depth. Uh, in the Amplified Bible, it, it uses the word, uh, word for principalities is uh, despotisms. And despotisms is oppressive, absolute power and authority exerted by a government. Oppressive, absolute power and authority exerted by a government. And so we, we see that we've got on the, on the human level, the despotisms, the man manipulated to operate by the counsel of the devil to rule and oppress other people. We see this, China is a despotism. North Korea is a despotism. Russia is a despotism, although they, you know, it's kind of changed a little bit. All these things are called despotisms. And here in America, we are fighting right now the despotism that is trying to take over this country and trying to rule. You know that because they're arresting anybody that tries to, to, tries to reveal them. They're ruling with absolute authority and corruption. They're trying to bring oppressiveness. And for those of you that, that you know, the weak stomach ones that say, oh no, he's getting on politics. This isn't politics, this is demons and angels and God and the devil and Lucifer and amen. This isn't about some kind of political thing. This, this is the fight for our life. You gotta understand, we're, we're not gonna elect somebody and they're just gonna cure everything. This is, a, this is, this is despotism, this is spiritual warfare and our government is coming under the power of a despotism spirit. Familiar spirits are operating in our government. It doesn't matter if it's Democrat or Republican. We are seeing in, on Capitol Hill, familiar spirits have control of our, of our ability to govern. And because of that, they are becoming very authoritarian. They're becoming very oppressive. They're wanting to put they're wanting to put people in a, they, they call us unnecessary eaters. The economic forum labeled most of them, and I'm getting ahead of myself because this is world, but they labeled those of us that aren't elite, they labeled us as unnecessary eaters. In other words, they resent the fact that we are eating their food. I resent the fact that they resent the fact <laughs> that I'm eating their food. Hey, man. <laughs> Let's just get this out in the open. I'm not eating their food, I'm eating mine. They didn't pay for it, I did. They're doing everything to take my money through taxes so I can't eat, but I'm still buying my own food. I'm still growing my own food. We are still canning our own food. It's not their food, but they think it is, and so they, they want to oppress us and, and, and literally eliminate. They, they want to eliminate um, billions of people and, and so, that, so that they can have this whole world to themselves. Can you imagine a bunch of people wanting to have the whole world to themselves? I mean, can you imagine Bill Gates sitting in his tower with a couple of servants and nobody else around, you know, just, just what, what's he going to do? 
What is all that? You know, all these elites, they seem to think that they don't need us. Boy, am I getting down and dirty today. Amen. I don't need them. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I'm trying to get focused here. Despotisms, oppressive governments. Since we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, we must understand that those governments are under spiritual control. Now, if this was said aside from this, but Paul is saying this is the spiritual levels. This is a spiritual hierarchy of authoritarian structure of the devil. And so this is the bottom level. This is the government level. This is the man level, the demon, demonic powers working in men and, and to carry out the will of Satan. So the fact that he put this in, this state, this this uh, category means that it is a spiritual power. It is not just a natural power. It is a spiritual power. Now, this spiritual power works anywhere there's a form of government. It doesn't matter if it's a national government, it a, a state government, a county government, a school board, a church board. It doesn't matter where it is, anywhere there is a form of government, these spirits are trying to infiltrate and work in those governments. Across America, churches have been taken over by these familiar spirits that have worked their way into the government control of that church and they dominate and control and they squash anything that brings that, that is the works of Christ and they try to keep it neutral and they try to keep it from... That's why we're dealing so much with all this garbage today in the churches. Why? Because they have to eliminate the authority structure of the kingdom Kingdom in order to take over. But the authority structure of the kingdom is not given in. We're not going down. We're not giving up. We are going to come back. In Jesus' name, we're going to come back. Hallelujah. Praise God. We're going to throw all this garbage out. Cast it out. Throw it out. Something. I don't know. You know, there is, man, I don't have time for all this. There is a, Jesus cast demons out of people and other times he said, I've, I've just got to, I got to go, go here. I got to try to help you understand this. John chapter eight, before we go any further, I got through it this last night. I got through writing some notes down, just some bullet points. And I got through writing it down and I looked, I held it up and I looked at Betty. I said, this is two to three weeks. I don't know what, I don't know what I'm going to do here. John chapter eight, verse 44. Jesus talking to the Jews that are confronting him and they're saying, we have Abraham as our father and, and uh, you know, we know the truth because we have Abraham as our father. And Jesus saying, you don't, you don't, you don't have any idea because you don't understand. You can't hear my words. You can't hear the truth. And in verse 44, he says, you are of your father, the devil, and the desires of your father you want to do. Now listen to me. Jesus did not say, come out of him. He said, you are of your father, the devil. In other words, you are under the influence willingly When somebody is willingly participating with the demonic authority structure, you can't cast that out. Come on, somebody. Jesus never one time, when the, when the Pharisees was confronting him, I mean, they were a demonic bunch. They were, they were evil. They was always wanting to kill somebody, stone somebody. You know, they, they, wanted, they, they, they were despotisms. They wanted to rule with absolute authority. And they constantly tried to bring people under more and more oppression with their rules. And they, they kept adding to the law and adding. And, and they were a despotist type of, they were despotic men. 
and they constantly tried to increase this thing. But when Jesus was talking to them, he would say, you're a brood of, of vipers. You're whitewashed tombs. He would talk to them like that, but never one time did he say, devil, come out of them. Because there's a difference between somebody who has been taken over by a demon spirit unwillingly and somebody who is willingly operating in that authority structure. And that's through pride, that's through arrogance, that's through narcissism, that's through the desire to control other people. And, and that's why they operate in that because the devil loves proud, arrogant people. He loves people that, that want to dominate other people. And so they willingly yield to that so that they have power over other people. You can't cast that out. You can take a stand against it, but you can't cast it out. Okay? He said, you're of your father, the devil, and desires of your father you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own, own resources. For he is a liar and the father of it. Have you, ever, have you ever seen so much lying going on today? I mean, it's always, we've always had lies, but I've got to get past this, but I just can't hardly, I can't hardly get past it because I'm just amazed at the lies, the bold-faced lies that is coming out of leaders across our nation today. And, and, and it comes out that they lied, and it comes out that it was all fake, but nothing ever gets done. Why? Because the wolf is in charge of the, of the chicken house. It's hard. The devil isn't going to arrest, arrest the devil. They have a very strong authority structure. Amen. But because I tell you the truth, you do not believe me. Which of you convicts me of sin? And if I tell the truth, why do you not believe me? He who is of God hears, the, hears God's words. Therefore, you do not hear because you are not of God. Then the Jews answered and said, and here it is, the devil always blames, the devil always accuses other people of what he is. He's the accuser of the brethren. Then the Jews answered and said to him, did, did we not rightly, did we not say rightly that you are a Samaritan and have a demon? I mean, they tried to, they tried to put him in the worst category because they hated the Samaritans. And so they put him in this category. You're a Samaritan and you've got a demon. Lord Jesus, help me. I do not have a demon, Jesus said, but I honor my father and you dishonor me. Now notice Jesus did not cast that out. He confronted it with truth, but he didn't, he didn't cast it out. In, in the book of Acts, go with me to the book of Acts. I, I'm getting all, this is all, I've got to do this the way Holy Spirit tells me. In the book of Acts, chapter 13, and verse 8, Apostle Paul is being brought, and they're wanting to hear about this Jesus. But in verse 8, it says, But Elimus, the sorcerer, for so his name is translated, withstood them, seeking to turn the proconsul away from the faith. Then Saul, who also is called Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, looked intently at him and said, O oh, full of all deceit and all fraud, you son of the devil. Amen. Talk to him, Paul. You enemy of all righteousness, will you not cease perverting the straight ways of the Lord? And now indeed the hand of the Lord is upon you and you shall be blind, not seeing. Oh God, help me. I would love to go to Capitol Hill right there in a congressional meeting and start saying y'all gonna be blind and deaf and mute until you repent. Excuse me. While I 
exhibit my feelings. I am so tired of this stuff. I want to see the kingdom of God begin to rise again. Amen. No excuses. Amen. The kingdom, when the kingdom of God begins to rise, things like this start happening. Amen. And Paul said, oh, you just, you're just not going to cease, are you? So you're just going to be blind for a while. Ha! <laughs> Amen. Go for some of that. Amen. I told a family one time, I mean, I believe, I believe the word of God. And I, I told a family one time that was lying to them. I was trying to help them. They would not, they, they, they lied when the truth was easier. The whole family, mom, dad, the kids. And I was trying to help them. I was trying to help them get their lives straightened out. And I, and, and I couldn't get anywhere because they wouldn't tell me the truth. I got tired of it. So one day I called him and I said, hey, I want you to come to my office, bring the kids. They all come in. <laughs> they all come in and sit down. I read in, them in the book of Acts about Ananias and Sapphira. And I said, I have asked God to kill you tonight if you lie to me. And I was serious as I could be. I said, you lie to me tonight, you're gonna drop dead right in this office. I never heard such confessing in my life. All of them started talking all at the same time. I mean, we was getting right with God and everybody else. And they, <laughs> the looks on their faces was kind of, kind of, Hilarious because they was hearing stuff they'd never heard before <laughs> coming out of each other. And they was looking at each other and they was talking. I mean, truth began to come out. <laughs> Amen. I told somebody the other day, I said, I think it's time that some of these, some of these evil leaders start getting eaten with worms like Herod did. I know y'all think I'm just mean and everything, but I, I have no, I, I don't play with the devil. I'm not gonna play patty cake with that which is trying to destroy us. If somebody broke in my house in the middle of the night, I would not go to them and say, you know, I know that you probably had a rough childhood. And I know you're probably not in control of yourself right now. No. No. At that point, it wouldn't matter to me what their reason was. And the devil is breaking into the house of God and breaking into our lives and breaking into our country and it's time for us to stand up and say, I, I do not play with you, you're a threat. Amen. You're a threat. There's so much pressure on churches and pastors today to try to accept everything. We're not gonna accept everything. fornication, adultery, and homosexuality is still sin, and we're not going to change that because God didn't change it. Lying, stealing, cheating is still sin. We're not going to try to cover that over. Amen. Come on, somebody. This, I haven't even got anywhere here yet. All right, I've got to, I've got to get off the... the the lower level. In B, the next one is we fight and we wrestle against spirit, the master spirits who are the world rulers of this present darkness. Now, he said principalities and powers and the rulers of darkness. These rulers of darkness is the next level in the authority structure. 
they are lording over the lower level. Okay? The ones that are manipulating humanity are under the authority of this next level, the rulers of darkness. The rulers of darkness, their main goal is to keep people from hearing, understanding, and seeing the light of God. To keep them in darkness, to keep them in, in ignorance. And so it's the, the master spirits who are the world rulers of this present darkness. Anybody that doesn't understand that there's, a, there's rulers of the world darkness, you're not watching. The World Economic Forum is one of these levels. They are operating in this level, the CDC, the WHO. They are now under the control of the world rulers of darkness of this present world. They are the ones that are, that are issuing the orders to everybody else. We have this level. It is a spiritual demonic realm. It is not just people. It is a spiritual demonic realm. And they are planning your demise. And they're planning the demise of the church. They're planning the demise of Christianity. And they're planning to take over the world. The devil has always wanted to take over the world. Amen. <laughs> He did, you know, these people keep coming up. I want to I want to rule the world. Why? What are you going to do with it? Amen. I've got to get on. The darkness, this present darkness to keep people, you know, that's what our news agencies operate under this this darkness. They, they, they constantly spout out lies and propaganda to try to keep people from seeing the truth. It's amazing to me. I, I'll hear people being interviewed, and I'll listen to what they're saying, and I'm thinking, where did you grow up at? What, where did you come from? How, how did you get so stupid? I know we're not supposed to say that. <laughs> All you soccer moms just went, <gasps> can't believe he said that. They're stupid. They are completely lacking in understanding of anything that... It's amazing to me how, how people have grown up in this country and they don't even understand the basic principles that make life work. How do they not understand? It's because they've not seen it played out. They've been lied to. They've been told this stuff. Amen. Amen. <laughs> The Communist News Network is constantly putting it, I mean CNN, is constantly putting this stuff out. <laughs> if that's your favorite news channel, shame on you! They tell me if I smile once in a while, it makes it a lot better. <laughs> so we are we're dealing with the levels authority structure and the top one is against the spirit forces of wickedness in the heavenly supernatural sphere we we are we're not battling just against the ideology of man we're battling against demon, demonic ideology. And this, this structure, the, the reason there's a structure is because Lucifer, uh, Lucifer watched this structure. He worked in this structure under Father God. And he saw the effectiveness of it until he rebelled because he wanted to be God himself. And so now that is the thing he uses on everybody. Don't you want to be like God? He will flatter you into destruction. 
One of the greatest ways the devil will destroy you is through flattery. He will, he, will, he will get you to believe that you're somebody. He'll get you to believe you deserve more than what you got. He'll get you to believe that you deserve a new husband, a new wife. He'll get you to believe that you deserve this, you deserve that, and, and flatter you and talk about, you, you know, and, and next thing you know, you've made, you've made destruction. We got, that's going on all over. Anytime you're in a government atmosphere, whether it's religious or world, there is demonic atmosphere activity that is beyond understanding. We see people succumb to this all the time. Why? Because the devil has been practicing this for thousands of years. He understands us. He knows us. He knows how to trip us up. He knows how to manipulate us. He knows how to push our buttons. Our only hope is the blood of Jesus Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit. That is the only hope. You can't stand against these demonic forces by yourself. They know you. They know how to manipulate you. They'll get you to do the work of evil thinking you're of God. They're master manipulators. We're seeing it all over. When, when, when leaders of, of ministries fall, it is disheartening. But one of the things you should take away from that is that is the kind of threat you're living in when you're in that position. Anybody that says, well, I wouldn't do that, you've never been there. I've seen it. There's every kind of demonic power trying to infiltrate. It, it's like, it's like, like our, our internet. You know, the, our, our, even our county sheriff's offices have to battle off many times five to six cyber attacks a day. Our little county sheriff's departments from China, from Russia, from Iran, from North Korea, Every single day, even our county sheriff's departments are being attacked every day, trying to get into our system, trying to manipulate, trying to get information, trying to take over. And that's exactly what you are. When God calls you into a leadership position, you are every day of your life, there is one cyber attack after another, trying to get to your mind, trying to manipulate you, trying to lie to you. Instead of getting angry, we should fall on the ground and humble ourselves and say, God, help us. I mean, many of our leaders are falling to this stuff. Mike Bickle in Kansas City has been decimated. He was a strong leader of prayer, 24-hour day prayer. But I gotta tell you something. There was some part of his life that the enemy was able to finally get that cyber attack through and manipulate him, and now he's been devastated, and that ministry's been devastated. T.D. Jakes, one of the most influential pastors in America, that man used to be able to speak things and cause, and cause even worldly people to understand. But then he got to be friends with Hollywood. And then he got to be a big dog, making lots of money, going to parties with P. Diddy. And next thing you know, he's caught in homosexuality. And the only way it is being shut down right now is because they have enough money and he's got enough friends in the elite system that they're keeping it off the news. They're buying it off. How did that happen? I knew, T.D. Jakes used to, used to preach at our missions conferences when I worked with, with a missions con in, uh, organization in Haiti out in Charleston, West Virginia where he, he started, where he had a church and, and he would come and preach at our, our little missions conventions. And he was strong in the word of God. He was strong in wisdom and understanding. But we have to understand that this, this, these levels of authority, they are not to play with. You cannot play with them without being taken over by them because they will get you into your soulish power and then they'll manipulate you. 
when they can jerk you out from under the blood and out from out of the power of the Holy Spirit, then they take over. That's why it's so important to have people around you as a leader that aren't impressed with you. Come on, somebody. One of the worst things, if, if you want to know if a, if, a, if a religious leader or a church leader is a narcissist, watch who he surrounds himself with. If he surrounds himself with people that's always patting him on the back, telling him how great he is, he's a narcissist. Get away from him as fast as you can. But if he's got people around him that's real, amen, they can say, whoa, pastor, I, you know, hey. <laughs> you know, there is nothing, there is nothing greater to a leader than somebody that has wisdom. I'm not talking about hateful attitudes. We face those all the time. And somebody's always mad about something. But somebody's got wisdom that can, that can give you counsel, that can, that can talk to you in wisdom. That's why you've got to surround yourself with a lot of other leaders. That's why leaders need to be meeting together. That's why we need fellowship. And that's why I'm doing my best to try to develop that is because we, we rub against each other. We rub the arrogance out of each other. Amen. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Man, I am... <sighs> I haven't even got to my message yet. Just, just started it. <sighs> Hallelujah. Spiritual wickedness in high places. We have to understand, I'm not even going to get into the next section. We have to understand what we're up against. And I, did, I felt like lately I needed to just clear the air because there's a lot of people that say, oh, you're just getting into politics. I am not a politician. I'm not getting into politics. They got into my life. They're threatening my family. They're threatening my church. And I'm not going to just sit down and say, well, I'm not, I, hope, I hope I don't upset them. I, I want to upset them. Amen. You can ask Sister Betty. If the right situation arises, I am not concerned about whether somebody gets upset with me or not. Because somebody's about to wear a whooping. Amen. You go, out, you go after my, my grandkids with your garbage. No, I'm not going to play nice. No. <laughs> I'm going to stand against it. Amen. Praise God. I always offer to pray for somebody when I pick them up off the ground. <laughs> I'm just trying to mess with some of you. <laughs> uh, sometimes I'm... Uh, sometimes I'm my, my own worst enemy. I can only imagine some of the stuff that would come out of that. <laughs> yes, and this is being recorded live. That's one of the things I said when, when we decided to do live, when I decided, finally I, I saw the purpose and I decided to do Facebook Live. I said, you know, the only thing that bothers me is I don't trust myself. I know me. I'm not, I'm not politic, political enough. Oh, anyway. So we, we know what we're up against. My next message is going to be the authority structure on the kingdom of light. And we've got to understand that. I've got to be in Indiana next week. Pastor Rob's going to be preaching. I'm going to be in Terre Haute, Indiana. 
and because there's a bunch of guys up there that are walking in the same stuff we're walking in, and I want to I want to get to know them and and get associated with them. And uh, thank God for that. Thank God for people that are rising up. I mean, there is a there is a revival. There's a move of God taking place. Praise God. But I want I want you to to think today about the authority structure that we work under and how that we have got to not be isolated but be insulated from this demonic mess that is going on today. Amen. They want to shut things down. They want to shut the churches down. Amen. They want to threaten the churches. You know, they, they wind these people up. I mean, you can call me ex- conspiracy theorists if you want to, but, but right now conspiracy theorists are, are 100 and, and, the, and the news media is zero. <laughs> it's all being proven true. But they wind these people up with, through medication and through propaganda and then turn them loose to go do a mass shooting somewhere. These people don't just... Dis- these people don't just decide to go into a church or a school to do a mass shooting. This isn't some random thing. This is a demonic conspiracy against the people of this nation. They wind them up. And it's going to increase. They're going to, they're going to start trying to f- focus more on churches. And so, just like us, churches all across the country are developing security teams because we have to deal with this stuff. We have to deal with threats. And now, they're trying to outlaw church security teams. They're, they're, they're wanting to call them uh, domestic terrorists, illegal militias. Why? Because it just makes them so mad that they can't get to us. They want us vulnerable. They want us to lay down like little puppies and, and, and wag our tail and, and show our belly and say, please, please don't hurt me. We don't do that. Amen. Man, I wish I'd get into the next section. Amen. There, there is the authority of Jesus Christ is above everything. When I was talking a while ago, I'm going to leave you with this. When I was talking a while ago about the kingdom authority structure, when the gospel begins to be preached in an area and people begin to get saved, it changes, it shifts the atmosphere. Obedience shifts the atmosphere over regions, over churches, because all of a sudden, obedience drives back the powers of the enemy, and our helpers, the angels, are commissioned to move in. And as people continue to preach the gospel, you know, Billy Sunday was a powerful preacher, and he would he would go into towns. He heard the gospel because he was, he was discouraged and depressed and went down by the river and was thinking about ending it all. And Holy Spirit spoke to this preacher and told him to go down to the river, down to this place, and preach in the middle of the night. He gets up, goes down there, and stands. There's nobody. He can't see anybody. And he's thinking, what am I doing? Boy, in once while... God will ask you to do stuff you think you're crazy. You know, it's like, you know, you're, you're looking around. So this guy stands there and preaches the gospel. What he didn't realize was there was this guy hiding that couldn't see him but, but start hearing this voice preaching. And Billy Sunday gave his life to Jesus that night down by the lake all by himself with this preacher preaching to nobody, he thought, and he gave his life to Jesus. What happened? God was about to change some authority structure. And he empowered Billy Sunday. And Billy Sunday, that's back in the days of, you know, the, the 
moonshine and the alcohol, the bars, all this kind of stuff. Kind of like we have today. <laughs> but he would go into towns and start preaching and he would stay there and preach the gospel until every saloon and every bar was closed down and turned into a church. When he left town, there was no longer any bars or saloons because the owners had gotten saved, the patrons had gotten saved, everybody had given their lives to the Lord, and now that town was a town of churches instead of bars and saloons. What happened? Obedience shifted the atmosphere and the authority structure of the devil was tore down and demolished and the authority structure of the kingdom came in place. And that's what we've got to have. Stand with me today, if you would. Our families are under attack. Our homes are under attack. Our churches, our schools, our cities. This authority structure has grown because of the disobedience of people. But I serve a God that doesn't quit. And he doesn't give up. And every time it gets bad, all of a sudden, Holy Spirit just breaks out somewhere. Amen. Could be Healing River Worship Center. I've been studying, I've, I've, I've been going back and revisiting uh, the Azusa Street Revival. And I've just been digging into that. Not just what happened, but the personal experiences of the people. And somehow, through prayer and through preaching the gospel, the authority structure in that area shifted. It changed. And all of a sudden, the glory and presence of God began to come in a way that, that had not been experienced. That old warehouse that they had services in began to get filled with this shiny, white, shiny mist that would fill the whole place. The Shekinah glory of God began to fill that place. And on top of the roof, fire would be seen going up and coming down from heaven and they, the fire would meet as it was coming down from heaven and going up and all the authority structures tried to put it down the police came and told them they was going to be arrested they tried to shut it down the churches in the area began to fight against it and tell people not to go to this meeting and the pastors began to rise up. They even tried to talk the police into arresting Brother Seymour for something, try to come up with something. They've done that over, over the years. What was it? It was the authority structure of the devil has, had, was strong in that area. But all of a sudden, a pocket of the glory of God because of obedience, because of faith, began to come into that place. And next thing you know, for blocks, people were coming under the power of God. A half mile away was the Central Railway, Railway Station. And a half mile from this little warehouse, people would get off the train and fall under the power of God in the train station. A half mile away. What happened? There was a shift in the atmosphere. The authority structure changed. And all of a sudden, Jesus was Lord over that area through obedience. Hallelujah. Father, as we sing today, Lord God, we just surrender to you. We surrender to you, Lord God. Father, as we have as we've declared this today, Lord God, I've not declared this to, to lift up or, or glorify Satan in any way, Lord God, but I want the people of God, I feel like we need to understand what we're dealing with. 
because we need the authority structure of Holy Spirit to come alive in the church again and begin to tear down the strongholds of the enemy. Father, I thank you that the strongholds of the enemy are being torn down over this region, Lord, over this area. Father, from north, south, east, and west, Lord, we pray and declare today, Lord God, that you are almighty God, and this is your territory, this is your possession. We are your people, Father God. Churches all over this area are coming under the obedience of the gospel and and of the Holy Spirit. Revival is breaking out everywhere. Father, I pray, Lord God, for the glory of the Lord to begin to move powerfully in this whole region, Lord God. Hallelujah. Lord, begin to unseat the authority structure of the enemy. Lord, in our school boards, our city boards, our state governments, our our national government, Father God, Father, I thank you that your power is greater than the despotisms. Your power is greater than the rulers of darkness. Your power is greater than spiritual wickedness in high places. And we thank you for that today, Father. Hallelujah. If you've been playing with the devil, you've been playing with sin, it's nothing to play with. You can't fight these demons. You can't fight this power by yourself. You have to submit yourself to the authority, the only authority that has power over it. That's the name of Jesus. If you've been playing with the devil, playing with sin, don't play with this stuff. Don't play with it. They come out now with a Christian Ouija board trying to pull Christian young people, trying to pull Christian young people into this garbage. It's bad enough without that. Now they're trying, what is it? They're trying to take control. Don't play with this stuff. Don't go watch these demonic movies, that, that horror movies that glorify demons and evil. Get away from it. But if you've been playing with this and you know today you need to submit yourself to God and shake this stuff off, I'm going to ask you to come right now. You need to come forward and kneel down and pray and say, God, I I ask you to forgive me of this. Lord, I need you. I need your strength. I I need deliverance from the bondages of Satan. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Come on. I'm not going to ask people to bow their heads. I'm not going to count to three. I expect people to square their shoulders and stand up. Amen. I expect you to be bold. I expect you to. I, I, I expect people to serve Jesus out loud, not secret agents. Amen. I expect people to serve Jesus out loud. When we say, I'm not going to play with this stuff anymore. I'm not going to play. I'm done with it. I'm not going to play with it anymore. Come on. Praise God. You end up, you can't, you can't just toy with this stuff. It will take your life. It'll take you over. It'll destroy your life. Hallelujah. Come on. You say, I'm done with it. I realize, I realize I've got to get away from this stuff. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Praise God. Give me some of my prayer warriors up here to help pray. Come on. Hallelujah. Lord God, I need you. I need you, Lord. I need you, Lord. I need you, Jesus. I need you to change my life. Lord, come into my life and change me today. Hallelujah.
Some of you men, I want to challenge you today to quit playing with sin. Quit playing with sin. Get away from pornography. Get away from chat rooms. You don't need to be in a chat room. There's not a man alive needs to be in a chat room on social media. Absolutely no way you need to be in a chat room talking to anybody. Go home and talk to your kids. Talk to your wife. Talk to your brothers and sisters in Christ. If you've been playing with this stuff, I want you to get out of your seat and say, I'm done with it. I'm cutting it off today. God, deliver me from this stuff. Come on, be bold, be brave. Stand up and be somebody today. Hallelujah. Come on, let's gather around this front today and pray. We need, we need to change the authority structure. If you're with me today and say, I want to change, I want to see the authority structure changed. I want to see the authority structure changed. I want to see the shift in the heavenlies. I want to see the shift in the heavenlies. Hallelujah. Glory. Lord, we submit to you today. We submit to you today. Lord, we call on you. We cry out to you, Father. We cry out to you today, Lord. Hallelujah. God, we cry out to you today. Come, Holy Spirit. We need you. Come, Holy Spirit. We need you.
Desire and I long to 